All right, here we are. I'm, I'm here with Ulrike Stromer for the, for the first presentation of today. It's going to be mostly focused about non-code contribution to open source. And uh, Ulrike has been a non-code contributor for around seven years. So she definitely knows what she's talking about. Um, I'm very excited to have you here today. Welcome. Welcome. Um, I, before we start, I would like to tell everyone that you can submit your questions uh, via the link below. If you go to that to that page, you can submit questions, and we'll get to those at the end of the of the presentation. I'll show this banner a few times during the presentation as well. So just in case you forget about the link, you can also always find it back. And I would say uh, let's get started. So Ulrike, the floor is yours. So hi, welcome to my talk about uh, non-code contribution to open source. As had as has already been mentioned, I've been contributing for a while now. So it's almost like seven or eight years and I am not a developer, so I'm not able to code. So you might wonder how I got there and what I could achieve, why I'm still here. And this is uh, during the presentation, I'm going to share my personal story of imposter syndrome, personal growth and open minds. So hi again, my name is Ulrike. You can find me on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Please feel free to reach out to me, no matter what question you might have, because really I am more than happy if I can support you somehow. In my professional life, I'm working as a requirements engineer and scrum master at Cloudflight. Um, we do tailor-made software solutions uh, with about 400 employees. And I'm also vice chair of Drupal Austria. For those who don't know Drupal, that's a content management software. And it has, by members, the largest open source community worldwide with about 1.3 million members. I'm also the founder of Open Minds, which is an event uh, with more than 400 participants to highlight and celebrate Austrian open source heroes and heroines. So let's quickly check the content of my talk. What can you expect? We're going to start with my personal story, uh, how I got into open source. Then I'm going to tell you more about uh, types of non-code contribution, what this is, what this can be. I'll also share some benefits uh, from non-code contribut contribution, so what I got back. Um, I hope to get you interested, uh, so I'll tell you a bit about how you could get started. And I also would like to take a few minutes to um, think, to reflect what we as a community could do in order to make it more easy for non-code contributors to join us. So me and Drupal, we have to switch back for a few years now when I didn't know much about open source and when it all was new and scary. So before Cloudflight, I was working in a Drupal agency and I was doing project management and client consulting. There was this local camp and I wasn't very sure if I could go there, if I would belong there because it sounded more for developers, but on the other hand, quite interesting. So I was in doubt. But uh, luckily, I had some developer colleagues that kind of dragged me with them and they told me, yes, you belong there and you can go there. Um, and we went together to the conference. But after the keynote, we would join different talks because my colleagues, they would go to more technical uh, talks and I stayed at the main stage. And next to me, there sat some guys and we started talking. And it was quite a nice chat. And at some point, they, they showed me the name badges and it had written project managers on their badges. And he told me that it was a bad joke by the boss <laughs> that um, he registered them as project managers. I told them that I was a project manager myself because I thought that was funny, but they, you know, they turned away and they would stop talking to me, which was really weird. And it of course didn't help my imposter syndrome as I was already in doubt if I, if I would belong to this conference. Luckily, I had my colleagues there and they picked me up again. Uh, the rest of the camp was really great and it was really interesting. I met inspiring people and of course I did belong there. And of course I had a great take home value and I had uh, inspiring conversations. Um, so yes, I did belong. Anyhow, there was this after party. And at some point, a very well-known community member from abroad, she was standing next to me and she asked me if I would join the sprint the next day. I laughed and I said that I was not a developer. Uh, and I thought 
that she too, she too, she would just walk away and yeah, stop talking because it's not too interesting to talk to me, not being a developer. But something really quite unexpected happened because she almost begged me. Please, please come to the sprint. We need you even more. Developers, we have plenty. So, wow. That moment quite changed a lot in my life and it laid a foundation of, for my career in open source. So why is it that open source needs developers and non-developing skills alike? And what could someone contribute if they are not able to code? Here and after, I always prepared two slides. The red one shows examples of what you can do, how you could contribute as a non-developer. So red is what you do. And the white one will show what you could get back, at least how I benefited. So white is what you get. The first thing I could think of is volunteer at events. Because it's an awful lot of work if you organize a community event. And help is really, really welcome and appreciated. You could help organize a meetup or a camp. If you look at the picture, you, you can see us uh, packing swag packs for the participants. That's something really, really helpful um, and a great way to connect the community. For example, if there is a conference and it's abroad and you travel there one or two days early in order to visit the city or something, you could try to connect to the local community and ask uh, if they need help with something. Really, it's an awful lot of work if you have to put like 200, 300 um, um, sponsor material things into tiny bags. But it's, a, it's an, a relaxed environment and really you can connect and help. Um, it's a great way to support. Uh, what else could you do? You could sit in the registration desk and hand out name badges or t-shirts or whatever. Or maybe you could help find sponsors. Maybe you know companies that are willing to support and it doesn't always need to be the big, huge amounts. I mean, they are great, of course, but you can start with smaller things that already also help. Like for a meetup, maybe you, your company is willing to pay the pizza for 20 meetup uh, uh, participants. Or maybe you can offer your office as a location for the meetup. All is really, really great. Or maybe you can hold a talk or maybe you know somebody that has an interesting topic to share. So that's also great. You can help invite speakers. Or maybe you have design skills um, and you can help design invitations or signs for events. So there's, around an event, there's really a lot that you can help with. Actually, I never went to the sprint in Vienna, I told you before. But my next event was DrupalCon Dublin. And I read on Twitter that they were, they were still looking for volunteers. So I took all my courage and I went to the registration desk the next day and I asked and I, well, I offered my help. And um, yes, they had something that I could support with. And actually it was really easy tasks because I should only go to the sessions that I would visit anyway, be there a few minutes early and ask the speaker if, they, if everything was all right or if they would need something. I should count the people in the rooms for statistical reasons. And during the Q&A sessions, um, I should ask the people to step up in front of the microphone because the sessions were being recorded so that later on the people could also hear the questions, uh, not only the answers. What did I get back in Dublin? Well, first of all, a cool uh, Drupal Con t-shirt in a very special color uh, for Volunteers, they have special colors. And you have to know that at community events, the people who make it happen, they are really very much appreciated. So wearing this T-shirt and being visible in the session rooms, like talking to the speakers, asking for the use of the microphone, this all of this got me kind of known amongst some participants. And I received some random thank yous, which was really nice. Uh, the picture on the slide is, has been taken from a volunteer thank you dinner. That's a way that communities use to say thank you uh, to the volunteers. 
and it's a great way to connect again you meet interesting people you you meet the people that are really involved in the community so it's really inspiring exchanges after the conference in a relaxed atmosphere and what i realized only later was the value of the speaker contact when i was in dublin you know they did remember me because um i was the one that helped me um, <clears throat> because uh, i was the one that helped them in um in a moment when they were nervous themselves and normally it's not that easy because the speakers they are the, know me, the knowing ones in the community so if they remember you and start talking to you that's really great because everybody wants to talk to them as i said before it's not that easy so this was really cool and helpful um, for my future it also helped me in my struggle with imposter syndrome because i did realize that the speakers are normal people and they are just as nervous as i am um, they have the same fears Do you know a, a hyper-communicative extrovert programmer, programmer? Probably not so many. So what you can really help with is create content. Because marketing and writing, they are often not the typical strengths uh, of a developer. And that's why communities are really, really uh, thankful if you can help in these fields. Like if you can help out on social media, uh, the website, writing newsletters, uh, creating marketing material, help with writing a press release. And it's perfectly fine if you're not the perfect writer, because really no worries. If you're not a pro, you can learn and experiment. And you're in a safe environment because everybody knows if you don't do it, there's nothing. I think I'm in charge of about eight social media channels and at least two websites. And yes, it was scared. I was scared and I was insecure when I first posted in the name of Drupal Austria. But now it's easy. I mean, it's still not perfect, but I can see myself improving. Um, so it's, it's learning by doing. And I really think that's the most powerful way to learn. Anyway, uh, I got a lot of knowledge about Drupal and open source in general, because of course, I don't have to invent all the content myself. I couldn't. Um, it's more like people are throwing stuff at me and they ask me if I can make a post out of that. So I'm kind of always up to date also, which is nice. So yes, it was all new and scary, but I tried and my confidence grew with every tiny step I took out of my comfort zone. And speaking of comfort zone, <laughs> if you look at the photos here, um, that's been taken from DrupalCon Europe uh on stage during the pre-note session and i was dancing really dancing the git song in front of 1600 people which was really <laughs> crazy but an experience that i wouldn't want to miss what else could you do you could help with the documentation you can share your knowledge because the success of others leads to the success of your project and this again supports your own success so it's all coming back to you did you ever hear a developer over explain tech stuff please try and help people succeed with your software from beginner to expert from developer to user if you're looking for a special information and you can't find it easily think about preparing this information and providing it for the next one looking for it you can answer questions raised in a forum, in issues, on Stack Overflow, on social media. You might think you don't know much, but think back when you get, were getting, just getting started. Right now, you already know what you know right now is already helpful to those who are starting now. Something else that we did and that might not make sense to every open source project, but you can think about it and you, you will judge yourself you can help with the localization. So all the photos and the pictures, they have been taken from localization sprints. Um, all you do, uh, for, for everything you do in these areas, you will get something back. 
you will get visibility um, because you're the one who's giving answers. You will get more knowledge about your project because not every answer you will give by heart. Some of the things you might look up again just to be on a safe side or you will get feedback from others upon your answer. And you will see other answers, different approaches. So you will really learn. Uh, as I said before, the pictures have been taken from different translation sprints because we wanted to get the German translation of Drupal 8 to 100 percent. Not such an easy task to do because you have to know that uh, German is not only one country, it's spread across like at least Switzerland, Germany and Austria. Um, and we still needed to have a consistent translation. And we needed to find a process that would scale because we wouldn't be able to do it just on our own. So we paired up, the, the, the way we did it was we paired up a developer and somebody that feels comfortable in writing stuff. And what I realized only later what this was that this resulted in a really great know-how transfer. And again, I could gain more fundamental knowledge about my project. It was a great exchange of know-how. And we had, as I said before, we had to develop a process that scales. We had, uh, we did find out what helps to create an excitement and a commitment towards a shared goal. And this knowledge now is really helpful for my professional life as a project lead and a scrum master. How to educate and mentor others, what works and what doesn't work. Spread the word. Please help us spread the word. That's something really um, you could help with. Uh, I mean, obviously, what you could do is hold a talk. But that might feel like a big step. So you can really start more easily by just saying thank you, by retweeting and sharing content, by appreciating the work of others, and by making it visible. Because really, normally, open source projects, they don't have these huge marketing budgets. So the value of uh, spreading the word cannot be underestimated, in my opinion. And you will get back something again, confidence and growth. You will meet like-minded people. People are really thankful if you like and share the content. You might become even a contact worth following yourself because you're spreading interesting information about a special project. I really got a lot of appreciation. And this need of something to be done better than nothing, this kind of lured me out of my comfort zone. And now I ended up with something that I can write into my CV. So contribution to open source really helped me in my struggle with imposter syndrome. And at this point, I'd like to give a special mention to Jill Binder and her diversity speaker workshops, diversin.tech. And this workshop series was brought to me by the Drupal community, so also something that I got back. It really helped me find a topic and gain the courage to propose a talk and stand here in front of you today. The photos have been taken uh, from DrupalCon Europe. Uh, thank you, Dina. And this is also really nice because I think almost everybody, almost everybody here is from a different country. So a great way co to connect with people, to get to know inspiring people, and it really makes it easy after the event to reach out to somebody with an idea from a different country. So really, really great. You can always give back. You can give back your knowledge. You can also think about donating money for the software you use. And it doesn't mean a need to be the, the huge sum. I mean, if you can afford a huge sum, that's, that's obviously awesome. But if you can't, you can think of starting more easily. Like, for example, I'm using this password keeping software. And from time to time, I just offer the amount of a beer to the developer who's maintaining it. Something else that we created, so it was me and three colleagues together, we created Open Minds. And this is uh, an award for open source projects and contributions from Austria. 
with an aftershow party, like a Viennese ball, but not a traditional one, more a fun, weird technology event. With We had more than 400 participants last time. The goals were to provide a stage for open source in Austria to make it more visible, to say thank you for all the, to all the contributors and their hard work, and to connect communities and people. So networking and celebrating was also a goal. The main categories we had was open software, open data, open hardware. And when I see, when I look back at the photos or uh, the brochures, we had some printed brochures uh, being produced. I'm really myself every time again amazed upon what is possible and what you can achieve if you believe in something. Because really the organization team, most of the time, it was four people only, and we did ev almost everything in our spare time. So this is my last slide about getting back. Really regularly, I'm being contacted uh, with job opportunities. I also found the courage uh, and I got me a, to apply and I got me a job at CloudFlight where I'm working today. This is something that I, I, can't, I, I grew with uh, my contribution to open source. I grew into this feeling more comfortable within all the, the tech surrounding developer scene. I've been invited to the advisory board for the speaker selection of Via Developers World Congress in 2018, uh, which was a, a big event with 8,000 attendees. They say about themselves that it's the largest event for developers in Europe. It was really an interesting experience to sit on the other side and receive anonymous talk proposals and judge them. Also, I got a free ticket to the con, which was great. I have been invited to uh, be a jury member at the, at the Swiss, Switzerland Splash Awards, which is an award for the best Drupal project. This was also a very valuable experience. So how, how to judge a web project, how to compare web projects. I also gained interesting insights and had interesting ex exchanges with other judges. And again, an invitation to the con. And last but not least, my contribution provides me with a topic and uh, the courage to speak at conferences like Women Tech Makers Vienna or Open Source Summit Europe or here yeah, today. And I got some swag from Morticon, which is amazing. So quick summary. Give back, make an impact, build your career. Do it for the right reasons and it will come back to you. Step by step, you might dive deeper into the whole open source world. And I really think it's an opportunity for everyone, especially for young people or career changers. Because you devote your time, but you don't need monetary investments like expensive courses, certificates and stuff. You can try and find out if the developer scene is the right thing for you. You can learn and improve your social and your coding skills if you want to do that. And again, why open source needs you? Because developers usually want to focus on one thing, and that is code. Of course, some programmers have fun organizing, doing marketing stuff and so on. But the overall majority really just wants to code. So you might be able to imagine how important the knowledge that you could bring into a community can be. So maybe you want to join me. Maybe I got you interested. If you're thinking about uh, getting started, what could you do? I'd recommend you look at the open source projects you work with. Maybe you're at the moment at a cool conference. I really think you should check out uh, if the, the project has an awesome community and make sure that you feel welcome there. In case you find an open source project that you love, just get involved. But really also stay considerate with your time because yes, open source also can be very demanding. I put together a collection of resources uh, like first timers only open source guide. And there's gonna be a version of my talk that I will distribute on Twitter and probably here through the organizers as well. So you will find those links on how to get started in my slides afterwards. 
So I'd also like to take a few minutes to reflect as a community. What can we as a community learn from this story? Maybe we could jointly reflect on how we could find more new contributors, how we could make it more easy for them to join us. I really have not yet uh, had a great idea on how to best reach out to new people, because obviously I don't have their contacts. But I can tell you what I needed. And first of all, I needed a starting point. So we could ask ourselves, do we provide a starting point for contributors and especially also non-code contributors? Do we provide it everywhere? And do we provide it regularly? Like, do we have something on our website? Do we um, more often call out for them on social media, in our meetup invitations, in our event programs? Is there always a space for this? I really needed lots of invitations. <laughs> so best of all would be if we could have it written in person and from deep, different people. What also, uh, something also important in my opinion is that we um, need to think about more tailor-made information. Like a lot of explanations and background information because we need to think about those people. They might not yet know that much about open source. So what open source really is, uh, they might be too afraid to ask questions and they might think that they have nothing to contribute. They might think that they don't belong here. So really, we need to, to, to hold out our hands to them. I really think role models would help. And I do think we have already role models, but maybe we don't show them. Uh, we don't present them loud enough. Because this could give answers and show success. Why should one do that? Why could one do that? What can it be? And what can you get back? So. We, I think we really need to reflect, do we make it harder or easy for new people to join? How can we hold out our hands? How can we show success and spread the word? And I th really think we can find ways to make non-code contribution to open source more visible. And I'll end my talk with my why. My personal why I've been doing all of this, devoting so much spare time, because really I do wish for my little daughter, she's two at the moment, and for all of us, that open source values like open exchange, collaboration, transparency, and the focus on humans community shape the future of our society. I really love to see all those open initiatives growing, like open science, open source ecology, or even open source seeds because I really think the open source way provides an answer to some of the social economical questions we face. So thank you. I'm very much looking forward to your questions. And really in case uh, you have any ideas on what people could uh, help to join open source, or maybe you are thinking about it yourself or you know someone, what would they need? I'm more than happy if you could share your thoughts with me. And also, I'm more than happy in case I can help someone getting started. Please reach out to me. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for your, for your presentation. It was really, really nice. Um, I think there's a lot of good things for people who are currently considering to, uh, to contribute to open source. And I think it's also great that you showed that there are so many ways that people can contribute on different platforms as well. Uh, like forums, uh, Stack Overflow, etc. cetera. Um, I think it's important to emphasize that uh, even though you think your knowledge or experience isn't valuable, that it actually is. And there's a lot of, of things you can do it within open source. So thank you, Ulrike. It was a very, very nice presentation. Um, once again, I would like to ask everyone that if you have any questions, feel free to uh, put them at the link below. Uh, we already have received some questions, so let's just dive right into them. Um, I'll start with the first one, which is from Chris. How to get started with non-code contribution? Like, what could you do if you're interested? What would be a starting point? Yeah, <clears throat> I would like if I if I already know what project I'd like to contribute, then I would check out uh, the websites and probably they have some 
social media channels that you could join, like Slack or something like that. So I would check definitely check that out. I'd also look if, I mean, at the moment, it's a bit more difficult because of this whole remote situation. But I'd also recommend you check out the local community um, and get in contact with them. Because maybe you can help organize a local meetup or just, just visit the meetup and just step over to the organizers, say hello, say that you're interesting, that you really don't know if you could help or what you could help with, but you, that you would be interested in helping out. I, I, re, I know they, um, they will be more than welcoming. They will be more than, than uh, they will think it's great that you, that you come to them. Absolutely. I think that's a great advice. Uh, so yeah, actually contributing to, to open source is one, but you also mentioned something about time contributions, like how much time should I contribute to open source, especially if it's in your free time. There's a question from Nico about this. Do you have a quick tip to stay motivated to contribute time to open source? Ooh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a good, that's a good so, one. So maybe, can... we, maybe we could start by uh, so this already considers that you are already contributing to open source, but let's start with, I'm, I'm not contributing to open source at all. Where do I start? Um, that's what you just answered. But then how do I make sure that I just spend enough time to provide my valuable contributions? Do you have any tips for that? Well, it depends because it depends on, on what you want to reach. I mean, what's your personal goal? Maybe you need to think about that. What is what is your why? Why are you doing it? Um, this this might help you answer uh, the question about time. Uh, and there's there's gonna be times when you just throw a lot of your time into a project, and there's gonna be times when you need, really need to step back um, because other things will happen in your life, and they might at some point uh, have a higher priority. So this is a really personal thing, but what, the, the, the why question uh, and your goals might might help you. And uh, it's also about how to stay motivated. Mm -hmm. I think if if you're already in doubt, if you if you're lacking motivation, then it's a good point to step back and reflect upon what has happened, um, and think about the good things and the not so good things, and how you could change that for your own good in the future. So if you're already lacking motivation, this might be a signal to step out for a moment and and think and reflect. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I think it's also important to keep communicating to everyone that you're working with. Yes. Just to, I mean, it's absolutely fine to just say like, okay, I, I'm not feeling so well right now, so I need to step back. It's, uh, I think it's very easy to feel obliged to keep contributing to open source. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's great advice from, from your side to step back when it's uh, when necessary. Maybe mm -hmm. I'd like to add something because mm -hmm. really the, you had a good and a very important point. Find a peer from your community, find somebody that uh, and talk with him or her about this. Uh, this will really help you uh, and help both of you. So if you're, if you're contributing already, you will have persons that you like talk to regularly and you should also like communicate those fears, those um, wor worries that you have. This will help you because everybody has this perfectly normal. Everybody has those doubts. Yeah, exactly. I think that that's great advice uh, in, in this area. There was also another question from Nico, which I think is interesting. So huge companies, they start to throw money or people in open source projects. Do you think this is a good or a bad thing? That's a good question. Um, they throw money, money people on open source projects. Well, it, it if it helps the software, it's probably good. But um, I think I know what's behind this question. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, um, it's probably about, um, is it the right motivation that comes with this? So is it the right spirit? Uh, I think we, we as a community need to make sure, sure that the people have the right, get, uh, we need to be role models in order to, to get the culture around, you know. I think that's the way it, it can work, just act like a role model and um, articulate if you, if you think something is good or not so good in a, in a sensitive way. 
Um, I think Ulrika just uh, just disappeared. There might be some technical problems uh, on her side, so we'll just uh, we'll just wait for a minute or two for her to come back. Um, I think so far we've we've seen great questions. Oh, she's back! I'm gonna add her back. Welcome Sorry, back. Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> the answer was too long and. <laughs> <laughs> so All right. Yeah, I think yeah. it's up to us to keep the culture alive and the spirit. I think it's up to us to to be a role model. Yeah, so to follow up on this question, you mentioned about role models. Um, in terms of if I want to get started with open source, there might be a barrier because I have insecurities about uh, are, are my contributions valuable? Is my, is my knowledge uh, valuable? So what do you think in terms of role models could be examples. So let's say, for, for example, you have a translator or someone who's very good at a certain area. Would those people serve as role models? I think so, yes. I think we should make them more visible than we do at the moment. I think we should uh, show all of this and that all this of this is needed in order to have a successful open source project. And how would you think the, the role models would need to communicate or be out there? Do you think uh, in videos or like in forums or what's a way for people to to find those role models? I think in every possible way is great. And yeah. it depends on really on the person itself, him or herself, if she or he wants to really wants to be, you know, be, be that visible. That's yeah. also something maybe maybe someone feels more good with this approach or someone with this approach. So we need to make sure that it fits the people. Um, but I think, yes, uh, especially, I think the hardest point is the starting point. So if I wanted to get started, I'd, I'd kind of see to get all information that I can. So I'd, I'd like to look everywhere on, on how to find information about uh, non well, even that non-code contribution exists, what new, was new to me back then. So I think we, we can't over-communicate that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> totally agree on that one. Um, you also mentioned in the presentation that at some point you were uh, there were pairs. So, for example, developer and a writer or translator. Yeah. Um, what do you think is the role of the open source managers, so to say, to to form um, yeah the, these groups of people? Because it might be hard to be to take the initiative by yourself and just reach out to someone randomly to to form a pair and get get started on something so what do you think is the role of the, the community manager so to say here i think it's providing the vision uh, it's providing the vision and people will find the way you know and they will ask for help and they will come up with ideas and being open to ideas and providing a vision that really uh, is i think the thing that that works. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, all right. So looking at the aha slides, we, we don't have any more questions. Um, is there is there something you would like to to give to the audience as a, a nice ending of this of this uh, session? <laughs> um I think if people keep reflecting and keep trying and learning by doing, we all grow. And um, that's what it, this is all about. So I really think growing, um, collaboration, learning from each other, and we will benefit, all of us will benefit. That's, that's the goal. 100%. I think that's a very nice uh, way of ending this. There's one thing from Nico coming in. He says, not a question. But this is a huge thank you for all your work and energy you give to multiple open source communities and help people to still be motivated. Thank you. That's so I, nice. I think that's a fantastic compliment you can receive. And also, like you mentioned, you sometimes get job offers. I think there's just so many opportunities to get to contribute to open source and to also um, work together with amazing people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'd like to. Uh, to uh, end the session here. Thank you so much for your for your presentation. I think you've inspired a lot of people. Um, just to finish this off, could you share your uh, Twitter handle and everything just once more so people know where to find you? 
Yes. Can you share this? Yep. Yes, there yeah. is. So really, no matter, no matter what question, just reach out to me. I'm, if I can help, I will. And yes, I hope I can. There's no, there's no stupid questions. They don't exist. Exactly. And you'll also be uh, sharing the slides on Twitter, I think. Yes. Um, so be sure to check that out as well. This session has also been recorded, so you can always uh, watch it back whenever it's convenient for you. So Ulrike, thank you so much again for, for being here today and for giving your presentation. Um, I would like to say that we go into a short break now. And then at 11, we have a session from John Linnert about the multi marketplace. So be sure to check it out. And if you have any questions, uh, we'll share the link to AHA slides as well. Um, if you are looking for something to do in the meantime, if you go to Veertly, our event platform, you can also ask questions there and network with other people. So I hope to see you in around uh, 15 to 20 minutes. And Ulrike, again, thank you so much and hope to see you around in the, in the multi community.